Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on the goals of security controls. Today I'm going to be talking about confidentiality, integrity, and availability controls, and then I'm going to conclude with a brief discussion on security controls. I have a fair amount of ground to cover, not a whole lot of time, so let's go ahead and begin this session. Of course, I'm going to begin by talking about confidentiality, integrity, and availability controls. No matter how a security control is implemented, it always has a goal. And that goal is to keep systems and data or personnel and facilities safe. In some cases, these end goals can be combined. However, in most cases, they are deployed separately to achieve the goal. It is not uncommon for the categories to work together to increase the overall security of data and systems. When the focus is on systems and data, the security control can be placed into one of three categories. And those categories are confidentiality, integrity, and availability. This is commonly known as CIA. So let's talk about confidentiality controls. This is using technological controls to ensure that only authorized personnel can gain access to the information. This is done through several different methods. It can use access control or permissions. This is explicitly establishing who can access the information. The person requesting access must have explicit permission to be able to access it. Then there's encryption which ensures confidentiality by using an algorithm to make the data unreadable unless the appropriate security key is present. Encryption can be placed at multiple levels. It can be placed at the file level, the storage level, or on the communication channel. Then there's steganography. This is concealing data, as in a text file, within a graphics file. The person receiving the graphic file must use steganography software to read the secured data. In many cases, access control and encryption are used together to increase the confidentiality of data or systems. Now let's move on to integrity. This is using technological controls to ensure that when data is sent from a source, exactly the same data is received at the destination. In short, integrity is authenticating the data. This can be achieved through hashing. Hashing is using a mathematical algorithm to verify that no change has occurred to the data in transit. Once received, the hashed value of the data is used to ensure that the integrity of that data has been maintained. Certificates can be used as an integrity control. Now, certificates are a cryptographic means of transporting or exchanging security keys. This ensures the integrity of the security keys. Then there's digital signatures. This is using a combination of certificates and security keys to authenticate the sender of a message or data. In short, ensuring the integrity of the source. Quite often, integrity controls are used in conjunction with confidentiality controls. Then there is availability. This is using various control types to ensure that data and systems are always available when required. Availability controls can be implemented through various methods. One method is fault tolerance. This is ensuring that even in the case of a failure, data is available. It can be achieved through multiple methods, including, including RAID or server clustering. Then there's redundancy. This is ensuring that systems are always available by using multiple units, as in using a partial mesh topology to guard against the failure of a network switch. Backups are another way of ensuring availability. This ensures that data can be recovered in the case of loss or corruption. Patching is another method of helping to ensure availability. Patching ensures that systems and data are available by keeping operating systems and configuration files up to date, safeguarding against common systems attacks that might bring down those devices. Now let's have a brief discussion on safety controls. 
Security controls should also be put in place to ensure the safety of personnel and facilities. Often the responsibility for securing systems and data are separated from the responsibility to secure personnel and facilities, but not always. Without the people and facilities, the systems and data will not do much good. Some security goals should be put in place with this in mind. The security controls should cover disasters, as in a fire or earthquake, personal safety, as in all parking lots should have adequate lighting, and outside threats, as in controlling access to the facility. The controls also need to be tested on a periodic basis to ensure that all people know the controls and understand how they operate. Now that concludes this session on the goals of security controls. I began by discussing CIA controls and then I concluded with a very brief discussion on safety controls. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope to do another one soon.